I know that she started um, going to the BA, which I was very happy about. Um, she was attending groups and she was really, really busy. She had a lot of doctor's appointments and group sessions and she was um, talking to a lot of the uh, vets at, at the facility. The group, the group helped me a lot to, to kind of uh, open up a little bit more and be, not be so reluctant to, to follow treatment. So uh, I started seeing the, you know, the, the therapists, the psychiatrists, and um, then I uh, saw Dr. Ben, and uh, they did some tests and everything. And that's uh, when I sat down with Dr. Ben was the person that kind of like helped me like uh, understand so much <clears throat> because. Uh, like she kind of put a uh, name to everything that I was feeling. So, <clears throat> so she, uh, she, she put words to every, to all my feelings and, and I, and then she said that it was gonna be okay. And that I have gone through a lot of, uh, uh, through hard times, you know, at war or whatever, because I couldn't understand it. You know, I never felt that I went through social dramatic. I don't feel that way. I don't feel that I have gone through war, like, like she said, dr dramatic experiences. I, I didn't feel that I was in social denial. But with Dr. Bank, she, uh, I was in group, we had different type of groups, and I started to kind of learn and understand a little bit more about what I was experiencing, like my nightmares, why being angry, why sometimes I feel like angry and sometimes I feel like disoriented. And so she, she, she kind of gave me a name for everything. And she said that I had like a mild TBI and uh, I told her why I experienced this in school. I can't, I can't concentrate, so I quit school. She said, we gotta concentrate on your medical right now so that later on, you can move on with your future and you could go back to school and do whatever you want. She loves um, the military. She loves her fellow soldiers. She wants to help. She wants to help and she wants to get better. And that, that is, um, that's a good thing. That's who Jeanette is. Um, we're grateful that uh, it's getting a little better, just a little better, and that she's getting some of the help she needs. A traumatic brain injury can literally stop a person in their tracks, taking not only their sense of time, place, short-term memory, and connection to the outside world, but also their connection to their family. Tim was no exception. So he came home and one of the first things he did that was just not typical of him is he slept for, if, if you left him there, he'd sleep for days. When, when I got back home and started to integrate back with uh, the Tina and the kids as a family, there wasn't any real connection. I didn't have any emotional feelings. I, uh, he didn't remember where we had gotten married. He didn't remember any of our roads right here locally at all. I couldn't send him 10 miles from the house because he couldn't get home by himself. I used to call her, talk to her on the phone while I'm driving to say, where am I supposed to turn now? Yeah. And she said, well, by the big white barn or by such and such town. And I'd be like, well, where the hell is that? We used to all go fishing and whatnot, but then after he came back, that kind of stopped because he didn't quite remember where to go, where we went fishing or even how to fish. So. Um, he didn't go visiting with people because he didn't remember who they were. Prior to his injury, Tim and Tina spent many years together building their home and raising their three children. After his return, working in construction was no longer possible and parenting became difficult. He'd get mad at like, you know, like hmm, trying to read a tape measure and everything. Like some of the simplest things he couldn't do and he'd get mad. The next thing you know, the saw's going through the air, the board's flying, and the tape measure's broken, and 
and then I would turn that same anger onto her or the kids or whoever was happened to be within range and they would be catch the full brunt of the anger and the frustration even though it wasn't anything that they were doing it was just they became the target. I think it's more of that he couldn't remember how to do it and that's why he would get mad. I don't think like he got mad at us, he'd get mad with himself. Of course PTSD was diagnosed immediately and it took probably till the end of 2008 for somebody to start recognizing that he might have had a brain injury but they didn't really know what they wanted to do with it and actually they told us leave it alone and he'll eventually get better on his own. You know, just getting him diagnosed I think has been a, a big struggle. During the last year, Tim has received a variety of treatments for his traumatic brain injury, including hyperbaric oxygen therapy through participation in a Louisiana research study on its effectiveness in treating TBI. Tim and Tina feel that it has been very beneficial for Tim and in turn for their entire family. Just, just day to day, he brought back his personality. He hasn't been on medication in almost a year now. Um, he's gone back to running. The second time we went down for treatments, his average was uh, seven to 10 miles a day he runs. And that's on top of all his extra um, physical, you know, PT as well. Um, when he first had the injury and he came home, he did nothing, not a thing. He couldn't, he was too tired. He just couldn't do it. I feel almost like a new person. My energy levels have skyrocketed. Uh, just the, my mental attitude Getting that eagerness back to experience new things and get back into the things that I used to do is back. I mean, I'm enjoying things with my kids. Since the treatment, I mean, I'm just, I'm enjoying life. I feel alive again, happy. The overall success of any treatment plan involves a variety of approaches, including rest, physical therapy, medication, and learning aids. However, supporting a family member with a traumatic brain injury also means helping them mold a new structure for their lives and coming to terms with the realization that although they may not be the person they were before the injury, there can be joy, love, and fulfillment. Short-term memory is still affected, so the kids have had to pick up on that side of things and um, just just general things. I mean, they know dad's not as happy as he used to be, and they know he can be moody, so they, you know, plan what they're doing based on how he acts during the day, or so, yeah, they, they've learned to pick up on a lot of things when I'm not there to, to physically do it, to help him, to help guide him. They gave me a GPS. <laughs> they gave me a GPS, and ever since, I am the most independent driver in New York City. So that, that was very helpful. I also have a recorder. And uh, there's different files within the recorder where I could talk when I feel sad. I could record it so I could understand myself better. She always strategizes because she recognizes that um, her recall is not that great. and. Um, so now um, she does. So one of the things that she does that she talks about frequently is that she laughs at herself now. She's able to do that. She doesn't get uh, so bent out of shape. Um, we, we talk about it uh, because I forget things too. So, you know, I identify with her and so we kick it around a little bit and it's kind of fun. I would like Mato to find some peace. I'd like him to learn to accept his limitations and not to say to settle for them. I mean, you can always strive to improve, but there has to come a place of acceptance that this is the way it is now. And okay, once you get to the point of acceptance, I think you're at the point where then you can look at how you can improve. It's hard both ways, like having a dad with a brain injury and then having a mom who has to dedicate all her time to your dad because of his situation. So just basically to take it day by day and try to understand it from both sides. Yeah, to, to a family member that's welcoming their, the soldier back home is to be there for them, to understand that they may look, act, 
different than what they were before, but their essence is still there. You've got to find every single resource that's out there. You have to exhaust it and then look for more. You're never done. It's a constant battle. And we've learned there are some very good people who can help. Don't ostracize them because they're not who you knew they were. Um, that has been a huge issue for us. Uh, different people that don't call anymore or don't come around because he's not the way that he used to be. He's not all smiley all the time and he's not hunting and fishing and all that stuff. Um, it is coming back, but once people have done that to a soldier in their family, it's not just a soldier that they're doing it to, it's their family too. It's kind of hard to forgive something like that because you have a soldier that is at the lowest point that they've ever been at their life and you're pretty much kicking them in the teeth and um, that's just things that are to me unacceptable. I know that there are some limitations and um, she's got to work at getting better and um, but I don't believe that the old Jeanette is gone. She's still here. She just needs some help. All in all the retirement, um, the going back to school, the knowing being able to pinpoint the problem, thats it makes me feel at least uh, you know, that there is a future. Uh, you know, whatever it brings will be okay. The, what I see and foresee in our future is that we actually have one. I mean, there's, uh, there's hope for the traveling, the being together, and, and enjoying things together as a family. Don't, don't, remind, don't remind them of what they used to be and, and what they are like now. Or be, be gen gentle or tactful when you do so. But uh, just make them feel home, you know, make them feel a part of it, a part of a part of a uh, given time, given time, that's all. You know, just given time. <laughs> For family members or friends, supporting a service member or veteran with a traumatic brain injury can seem at times overwhelming. Sometimes it is hard for families to adjust to the changes in abilities, personalities, and behaviors that may result from a brain injury. With dedication and commitment, family members can help their injured loved ones throughout their recovery, making a difference today and all the days that follow. For more information on traumatic brain injuries, visit the Brain Injury Association of New York's website at www.biaanys.org.